I have a set of drawings where I laid out all of the dimensions right here. But to be honest, I have no clue what 34.91 inches is. I might make some plans that are prettier than this numbers wise and just make those better for you. As for these pieces of wood, these were originally saw posts and then I cut them partially through, flipped them over, cut them all the way through because my table saw blade isn't tall enough and then cleaned up the edges and now I'm going to clean up these edges and make sure they're the right dimensions. So 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. Oh my goodness, look at my floor. Oh, and, and look at my pants. This is not the best way to do it, but it is one way. We have our drawing here and we can lay this all out and try to get this as efficiently as we can. I'm gonna shade things in once I cut them so I know that I've done it and we are all good to go. I, I didn't need a piece of plywood that's 24 inches. What, what was I thinking? As for 34 inches, we can cut a piece off of here and 34.9, that's a little less than 35. I'm cutting these all without angles, except for this piece. I need to take special care to add a little bit more because I did the drawing, I think, wrong. So on all of my plans, I'm basically gonna make it so that you cut this distance, and then you go back with your angle, and then cut your angle off. I think that's just the most intuitive and the easiest for me. On these plans, you'll notice a 67 degree angle takes off about three quarters of an inch. So I'll just have to put this as 26 and 3 quarters plus a little room for error. So 26, probably just 27 and then go down from there. I can use this board and get two foot long pieces and then another 27 inch piece. Kids, don't forget to wear a mask. Ooh. Usually they say measure twice, cut once, but this one we're actually going to measure once, cut twice, because we're gonna measure it super rough, 27 inches, and then creep it down to an angled 26. I did leave a little bit more than 27, just as a margin of error. Whoa, they're all cut. Now let's add the angles. On these plans, I added a detail that's 67 degrees. You can take a test piece of wood that doesn't look so hot, then you'd cut it to a 23 degree miter, and then later you can hold it up to this drawing and check your right. Just about perfect. If we hold up the piece of wood to the drawing, you'll see that that's almost perfect. Now we can go ahead and add all of these angles to the pieces of wood we need. In an updated set of plans, I actually have all of the part numbers written down and it's glorious. So you, you don't have to guess, you can write down on the part like 105 or whatever. So this is 16 inches. This needs two cuts. This 35 inch part, or roughly 35 inches, has an angle right here, and an angle right here. This 21 inch part has no angles, so I'm gonna draw X's, so I know not to cut there. In this, I'll cut one angle this way, and the other angle 
the same way. So for this, instead of being a trapezoid, it's going to be a rhombus. And the same on the other piece. I'm going to draw a star on one of the sides just so that I know this is a special angle and I should really remeasure. Sweet, let's go to the saw. These symbols are really helpful. I was about to cut this. So here's the fun part, it's kind of like a puzzle. This piece I think goes up here. These two pieces go right here, then this piece goes here, and then these funky pieces. Let's see, I know I messed up somewhere, let's figure out where. Let's draw midpoints. These will kind of help us align everything. So half of 35 is, he would be 50. 13, 35, be about 17.5. And then we can align the two by fours off of this. We can do the same on this little board. Half of about 16 is about eight, so a little less than eight. And then I didn't do any dimensions from here to here, but I assume it's wherever it kind of fits. Huh. So it looks like I'm not perfect at triangles. So something went wrong here. Also, this should be 33 inches here. It says 23, I don't know. Uh, huh. I have these casters, and my, in my drawings, they're put right here. So I can just screw them in here, 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 and here. And then the idea with these is that they only protrude enough to work because I want to keep the height as minimal as possible. So you'll see if we just put them down here, it can barely roll this piece of plywood across. So if I had hardware floors, <laughs> there would be about uh, an eighth of an inch or like three millimeters of clearance. That's not gonna work. Since these are about the height of a two by four, however much I boost them up is basically how much clearance we'll have from the floor. You'll see as I add more height, there's more clearance. Now I have my line here, and I can line it up with my line here. After I lined them up, I clamped them and then turned the piece of wood over. The clamp is to keep its position, so it's all lined up. Whenever I'm screwing things in, I want to have a fairly uniform screwing pattern. So I think I'm going to make a jig for that. I'm going to get a 16 inch long piece of OSB, cut it 1.5 inches wide, and then I can use it as a guide. That was super cheesy. I'm going to mark a center line and then drill holes spaced probably 1.5 inches on center. Now I can use this jig to line up all my holes. The cool thing about this jig is if I need to extend it, I can use one of the last holes as a guide. I think this is a little overcoat. I'm not quite sure, but I, I actually think we could do every other screw. I did it again.
I noticed that there's a gap right here that's about 0.5 inches. This piece of wood is also 0.5 inches. Ta-da! Good as new. I'm also going to reinforce these this way. So I'm going to drill two holes here and two holes on the other side. This piece of wood right here goes on this side. This piece of wood goes on this side. I haven't cut the angles yet, and that's actually smart because I got the angles wrong. And I'm going to just go through with a jigsaw, and after the jigsaw, sand it down. Wow, but well, this looks like a fun section. Over here, I can put the computer, a lot of any of the things we need, and yeah, we're almost done with section one. The reason I'm being so careful about the height of the wheel is because we have a pr kind of low ceiling, which makes us have a kind of low projector, which makes us have a kind of low simulator. So you wanna have this like a low rider, and only like half an inch should be on the ground. In my drawings, I had a certain radius that the wheels rotated around, that I could safely put the wheels. I might be cheating, but I figured out that this sanding pad is just the radius I need. I think it's a five inch radius. And this is five inches. So I didn't even have to cut a circle so just use a 5 inch diameter sanding pad and you'll be good to go. And look, it's already perfectly circular. The wheel can move smoothly over here, so that's good. And it won't hit the walls, which is even better. Now I'm roughly centering this wheel. I want to make sure that this distance from this hole to this board right here is the same on both sides. I actually don't really know why. It just feels like the right thing to do. Add this three quarters of an, an inch from here, and three quarters of an inch from here. This is just an arbitrary length, so basically, you do you. Do whatever you want. I was about to say, since we have these holes marked, we can go ahead and put this under the drill press but that wouldn't work so well. So now we can go ahead and just drill these out with our hand drill and make sure that they're the proper diameter for our screws. Now that I think of it, I don't know what diameter I'm going to use, so I'm gonna wait on this. I'm gonna go ahead and drill some 1 8 inch or three millimeter pilot holes because then I'll have a reference on each side of the piece of wood. Broke that bit. Don't drill at angles, kids. That's kind of a stupid thing to do. This one was super good. This one was super good. This one was super good. This one was kind of a, an utter failure. <laughs> I had the drill bit right here, and then I, I actually didn't do this one for some reason. I'm using some 1 4th inch machine screws that are 2 and a half inches long. These are intentionally too long, 
and any excess length can be hidden inside of the simulator or cut off with an angle grinder or something. The idea with these is that it goes through the wheel, through the shim, and then also through the base, the MDF. Let's drill the holes. For the shims, I'm going to cut these pieces of wood, mark out where I need to drill the holes, and then cut the holes. Part of me really wanted to overcomplicate this. Part of me wanted to go out with an angle and find the midpoint and then get an offset from the edge of the wood and then find the exact number of inches from that one offset to the hole. But then I realized I have a perfect guide right here. I think I should use it. Awesome! Now what we need to do is put these spacers into the wheel, like so. And it helps to pound them down sometimes. We basically want an assembly like this, and we want to do this four times for the four wheels. Let's go ahead and put them under the wheels, shall we? I know I just used a hammer and I'm sorry, but you can, there's an easier way. You can actually just screw it in like the screw is supposed to do. That way it's a lot more peaceful. Yeah, I like the hammer more. Now I can use washers and a nut just to make sure that it's all good to go and that they stay in. Will it skate? I'm kind of tempted to take this to a skate park. That concludes this week's video. Make sure to go like, share, subscribe, and come back next week for the next video. I hope you all have a fantabulous day, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. I would like to give a huge thank you to all of the people on the screen that have been helping me with my Cessna 172 project. It means the world to me. Thank you so much.